is using the curvature of the level. Honestly, it almost looks like it's a flower made out of Mentos, but... <laughs> hey, I'm Paolo. This over here is Jiro. And today we're going to do a tutorial on assisting your level design with a little bit of code. So we're going to use as a base the level I made for the last tutorial, link in the description. So let's make a little cube, make it stretchy and basically like a thin stretch step because we're going to try and make a staircase. Then we're going to make a material for it and I'm just going to make it gray and just up the metallic so it reflects a little bit. And this seems somewhat right, but you can do it any way you want. And I'm quickly going to speed up to my attempt at trying to make the staircase by hand. And you can see basically what I'm doing is basically copying each step, moving it up a little bit, trying to turn it a little bit and adjust the position. And I tried to do that a few times, then I grab like four together and then I just try to duplicate those and then arrange those. But you can see uh, at the end, basically, my, my curvature is not right. Uh, the separation between the different steps is uneven. I know how this might look, you might be thinking I'm making it look hard on purpose, like one of those uh, infomercials where they're like, oh, are you able to cut a potato with a simple knife? And the guy's like destroying the potato and cuts off his own finger and all that. I swear to you, I'm not failing on purpose. It is actually pretty tricky to try and set up these uh, steps by hand. Okay, so let's look at how we could do this, but now with code. So let's select our leftover step, drag it into our assets, and that'll convert into a prefab. And let's delete it from here. Now let's create some code. Uh, let's create first a folder, and we're gonna call this editor. And this is where we're gonna keep any scripts that are related to the editor, as the name would suggest. Then right click, create, C sharp script, and let's call this spiral staircase. Let's delete these two methods that are not really necessary. Okay, so for this next part, it's gonna be like four or five minutes straight of code. So just hold on, I promise it's worth it. So first let's uh, declare a using Unity editor. And then down here, let's create static uh, void create. In order for the engine to find it, we're actually going to declare over here a property and it's going to be called menu item. And then we're going to pass a path here and we're just going to call it tools uh, slash uh, staircase and slash create. And this path is what you know you will use to decide where to put it in the menu. So in this case, you can see we can do tools, staircase, create. Right now it would do nothing because our function is empty. So let's add some functionality. So let's start with a couple of safety checks. We're going to say if uh, not application dot is editor, meaning if we're not running in the editor right now, uh, or if uh, selection dot uh, active object is empty, then return. And basically this is what's check uh, what is saying. I don't want to run this code at all unless we're in the editor and we have something selected. The reason I do the check for something selected, and this is just a, like a safety check that I prefer, is because since we're going to be creating a whole lot of um, a whole lot of instances, I don't want to do it in the root of our hierarchy because it's going to get super messy. So I prefer always having something selected and creating the instances inside of that, so that it's easier to clean later. So the first thing we need to declare is um, the prefab we're going to be using, and for that we're going to use object step prefab. And we're going to say equal to uh, asset database dot load asset at path. Uh, we're going to pass the type, which in this case is just going to be object. And then we need to tell it uh, the path of our prefab. And to get that, we go back into our editor. We find our prefab, right click, and then copy path paste it into the thing and now we have the path for that declare a few variables that we'll need uh, let's start with int how many steps and let's start with 100 then float radius and let's set to 5 then float uh, delta uh, angle equals 5 and this is how much is going to turn every single step and then float delta y equals uh, 0.1 f and this is how much is going to move up every step and now let's uh, make our loop int i equals zero i is less than uh, how many steps 
uh, I++ and then in here I'll say float angle equals delta angle times I I'll say float x equals mat f dot cosine I'm gonna pass angle the thing is right now our angle is in degrees and for cosine to use it we need to convert it into radians so we're gonna multiply angle by mat f dot degrees to radian and then we're gonna multiply this by the radius and let's do the same thing down here but this time for sad and instead of cosine we're gonna call sine and now let's calculate our y which is much easier to calculate y equals delta y times i okay now let's create our object and to do that it's very easy we just do game object and let's call this step equals prefab utility dot instantiate prefab and then over here we're just going to pass in the step prefab and then we just uh, cast this as game object since that's the variable that we have right now okay now let's set the parent for it so we say step dot transform dot parent equals selection dot active game object dot transform and then let's set the position and rotation so step dot transform dot local position equals new vector tree and then we pass just x y and set in there and then for the rotation we do step dot transform dot local rotation equals quaternion dot euler and then we just pass zero comma minus angle comma zero and the reason we pass minus angle is because right now we're going to grow our staircase counterclockwise but if you want to do it clockwise you can also pass step without the minus but you also have to go and adjust the x and z generation so let's create a, an empty object to contain a staircase and we're going to select that one and say staircase and I want to move it to be basically at the center of this fountain. So let's move it like right around there. And then we select it and we say tools, staircase, create. And there we go. We got a, our initial pass of staircase. So just imagine the amount of work that would have been to set up each step on its own by hand. And it still needs some work. Like for example, right now it's too high. And so we got to jump up. Uh, also, it's, uh, it's a bit too wide. Uh, but we can tweak all of those things and you'll see soon that actually tweaking them through the script is super super fast back in your script the first thing we're going to do is create a second function we're going to call this static void destroy and the reason we're going to create a second one is so that we can easily clear all the other uh, prefabs that we've created so we're going to add this exact same check at the top just to make sure that we are in editor and we are actually selecting something but we're going to change this one to be active game object we're actually going to change it here too that is a, a better check for what we want so we're going to save a reference to whatever we're selecting and do that we're going to say transform as selected equals a selection dot active game object dot transform and now we're going to loop through all the children or whatever we're selecting. And for that, we're going to have to do the loop backwards. So the reason we do the loop backwards is because imagine if we start from zero, then we delete zero, then one becomes zero. So when we move to one, now we're actually deleting two. And then when we delete that one, then three moves into the position of one. And then now when we move to two, we're destroying four. And as you can see, we're skipping one every time. So to go backwards, we're going to go for int i equals uh, selected dot child count. The minus one is basically because this is a zero index based array. So when you get count for an array that has 10 elements, you'll get 10. But the 10th element will actually be index number nine. And then over here, we're going to say and i is greater or equal to zero. And finally, i minus minus. So it's kind of like the same as a, as a regular for only backwards. I hope that makes sense. And the inside word loop, we will say uh, game object child equals 
uh, selected dot get child and then we're gonna pass the index in here and we need it as a game object so we're gonna do dot as game object now we have the child we want to make sure that it is one of the ones we created so for that we're gonna say if child dot name equals step which is the ones that we've been creating then please destroy immediately this child the child must die destroy should also have a menu item attribute but this time it's tool staircase destroy and we're going to call destroy at the very beginning of the create function so that every time we call create we just wipe the previous one so to test this we're going to select this we, we already know that this is a little high so maybe let's move the staircase a little bit down and then let's select this thing and let's say tools staircase destroy gone tools staircase create and it's back in okay excellent so now we can start iterating and the radius of five clearly is a little too much so maybe let's bring it down to a three and let's see how that feels and we can just say tools staircase create and that will destroy the old one and create a new one that looks pretty decent let's give it a try that's looking pretty good let's go up ah nice uh, we can tweak a lot of things we can change like how much spacing there is upwards how many steps there are their angle that separates them so this is the one and let's see what happens if um, we increase our radius a little bit over time so radius plus equals and let's say point uh i don't know zero 25 and maybe let's increase uh this one to like 150 steps select staircase tools staircase create and the new one is already created and as you can see now the further it goes up the the spacing between the steps starts to grow and i mean just take a look from here like this would have been a pain in the ass to set up by hand uh, and it was super quick with a little bit of code let's get rid of that experiment and try a new one we could give this a little bit of a rotation to help make it feel more like a ramp so maybe give it a 45 here as you can see i, for, I twisted it the other way around I should have done minus 45, but um, it still looks kind of interesting. It works, which is kind of dope. So now we're going to do another example. We're going to use uneven terrain and some raycasts. But before we do, if you ever want to watch more of my face, I'm on twitch.tv slash Pablo Poon on Mondays, Mondays, Wednesdays and Saturdays. And I'll see you there. So this is essentially what we are going to be making, except obviously we're going to make it on 3D. But I thought I showed you first on, on 2D just to explain sort of how it works. So we got a few variables that we can tune. The first one is how many turns and that determines how many pedals there are. So right now we have six, but you can see as it gets tweaked up and down, you can see it just adds or removes pedals. Then we have how many depths and this is how many of the little balls are created on each side of the pedals. This is the depth distance, which is how much separation there is between each one of the balls. And finally, we have the radius, which, as you can see, is basically the space in the center of the flower to the petals. Now let's go to another part of the level. We have a little bit of uneven terrain here. And we're going to create two prefuffs, one for POC A, another for POC B. And we are going to give them different materials so that we can tell them apart. A quick tour of the code. We're phase, we first destroy, just like we did with the other one, so that every time we generate, we clear all the old ones we made. Then we declare two prefabs, one for our POC A and one for our POC B. Then the variables that I showed you on the demo. Then we declare a delta angle, and that's how much uh, the angle is going to change between each one of the turns. And to determine that, we do 360, so the circumference of a circle, divided by how many turns. And we do something similar for uh, delta depth angle by saying um, delta angle, which is how much you change for each turn but this time divided by how many depths. And this is what will give the, the effect of that sort of curvature for the pedal. And then we're gonna do three, four loops. Uh, the first one is gonna be just zero and one. And this is basically one is for a POC A and the other one's for a POC B. Then we loop through how many turns. And finally, we loop through how many depths. So to calculate the angle, we just grab the delta angle and multiply it by T, which is a turn. And then we add to that uh, the de delta depth angle and multiply it by the depth. And we change the direction that goes based on if we're doing POC A or POC B. 
so basically the, the white petals go one way the, the black ones go another way to calculate our radius we just do base radius plus uh, depth times depth distance so pretty simple and then we essentially do almost the same thing that we did on the other one just a cosine and a sine to calculate the x and z right now i'm hard coding uh, y to 2 uh, we will change this uh, but that is new code so i want to go into more detail with that so we'll do that in a step after then we just instantiate our prefab and we use i to determine if it's going to be poc a or poc b and then we set the, the parent and the local position just like we did on the previous one we have an empty game object over here just like we did with the last one and then we're going to do tools floor pattern create there we go we got ourselves a floating flower now for example with the staircase when we wanted to move it down we just did this but since the terrain is uneven here as you can see that means some of our stones go inside obviously fixing that manually will be an absolute pain in the ass so let's do it with code okay so now we're gonna do a raycast so let's first declare raycast hit hit and then let's say if physics dot raycast then we're gonna pass the positioning of the puck and then for the direction we're gonna pass vector three dot down then we pass out hit which will tell the raycast whatever your result is put it into this hit variable for us to use later and if we do go into the if that means that the physics actually hit something and we just set the position of the puck to be the same as where we hit and then for the rotation uh, the hit will actually give us a hit normal and normal is a vector that's coming out of a polygon basically telling us where the polygon is facing so since we want to align the puck to that polygon we need to grab that normal and then convert that into a quaternion so let's give this a try we have our our flower selected and then we go tools floor pattern create and there we go now you can see they're set to the floor and they're turned on the side so i need to correct that but as you can see they're all sort of following the shape of the little mountain so let's quickly fix the fact that they're on the side and to rotate it we just have to do a multiplication by quaternion dot euler and we can just pass um, 90 comma zero comma zero and when we try it again you can see they're all facing with the terrain and we can get a lot done with just some math tweaks so let's change this to a nine uh, maybe let's change the depth to like 25 and uh, maybe just uh, reduce the depth distance a little bit and let's create it and there we go we now have our our big flower as you can see it's going um it's using the curvature of the level honestly it almost looks like it's a flower made out of mentos but <laughs> now i'm going to show you a couple examples from a personal project so in this case i wanted to generate the clouds that you see there so i created two cylinders here one is called the generation area and the other is called the exclusion area and basically what happens as the names imply i try to generate a cloud inside of the generation area but if it falls within the exclusion area i skip it and to choose the position i'm using perling noise which you can get with matf.perling noise and the cool thing about perling noise is, is that it kind of clumps so um, i'm using that to basically make it so when i create the prefabs they're more likely to be packed in together in little clumps which looks a little more cloud-like if you will and for this essentially i'm selecting between 20 different prefabs for clouds so i'm picking randomly between them and this is what it looks like in game it's like a bunch of uh, cotton sugar clouds or something very cozy and then another one that i want to show you in this same project this is this one this big dome that you see here was actually made in the same way and all of those little columns that you see in the front uh, i don't know grill of the dome or whatever you want to call it all of those were generated with code and the tiles on the top which are also separate little units are also made with code now to be clear probably in a, it would be way more efficient to just make a single mesh for the dome but in this case i just wanted to do it quickly with code so as you can see this is a really powerful tool and it really is up to you on the limits of your imagination to see how to use it i hope you had a good time i hope you learned something today i'll see you in the next one adios
Well, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified when new videos come out. Thanks for watching.